Hello, how are you doing this dope pal? I'm at the Western Science Center. Today we're going to be talking about archaeologist Foss up here in uh, Hemet. It's more of an educational, but always say educational is supposed to be fun. So we're going to have fun and it's also educational. Upon entering the Western Science Center, there's a gift shop that you go in there. They have drinks, something to snack on, and I got the Frito Lays and the Doritos Cool Ranch. Well, whatever you like, they have they have everything in here. If you're interested about souvenirs, they have uh, the giant slots. They have the Matadon. They have shirts that you could buy for all those stuff that they discovered. I am so glad Western Science is now open to the public. I have spoken to the front desk, they said the museum reopened in the mid-August. The place was more inland of Riverside. It will bring pleasant environment once entered. Would you believe most paleontologists discovered the fossil locally? Harley James Garbani was born on September 19, 1922. He was born in Hot Spring, California. As a hobby, he enjoyed collecting fossils on the ground. Harley used tools such as shovel, hammer, and chisel to dig up all the prehistoric bones and preserve them by using quick dry casts to avoid further damage. To nurture the bone properly, it takes two weeks to polish. The skeleton is fragile because buried for centuries. Harley was a genius who self-study to become one of the first paleontologists. All the years of developing types of preservation made an impact to the future. Most of the stuff they have over here is how they dug up all the old dinosaurs. It's not a very big museum, but you can learn a lot from this in a place and study more about it and just read up, just walk around, just read what they have available. And they just continue to uh, study more about it. Let's go back in time. In the west of North America, sea creatures were swimming like Allosaurus that dominated the territory. Strong survived the land and water. Small insects such as dragonflies, butterflies, and bugs are delicacies to these giant meat eaters. Insects were four times larger that made them easy target to the beast. The smaller germs survived the primitive times. It's really interesting how they dug up all those uh, fossils from the Diamond Lake and then uh, they showed you all this stuff that they have, uh, all the tools that they use to dig up all those fossils. They don't break apart and I really enjoy that. Wild animals like horses, bison, and all the beautiful animals ran free in Hemet. In the year 1990s, the city was planned to construct highway near the Diamond Drive. Upon the construction, they were discovering new specimen in the area. Residents named it the House of Specimen. Hemet alone had 90 new species recovered. They are planned to expand the building soon once the animals are identified. The director of the museum is Dr. Alton Dooley. He is knowledgeable demonstrating 
the multiple videos on how cultivated the skeleton. It takes two weeks to cast a single prehistoric bones. They have designated laboratories to puzzle the lost mammals. Prime example, the mastodon. Special thanks to computer technology, single bones can be traced the size of the animal, feature, diet, and the movement. When the paleontologist discovered Max, it appeared he fought many meat-eating dinosaurs and managed to survive with all the wounds. You will enjoy the unique techniques to show to this public. 10% of the bones found they were successful to show to the public. Mastodon lived 25 to 50 million years ago. They are more prehistoric than the mammoth. The good news today is the elephant are here. They are distant cousin. In the auditorium, they have a seven minute show. If you miss it, don't worry, they always have it every 30 minutes. They, they'll tell you the historic what happened, how the archaeologists started digging up all those uh, fossils. It's really entertaining if you take the time to really pay attention and watch it. I highly recommend it. The Harlem ground slot are strong animals. If they were to exist today, they'd be great for cultivating the ground. They have strong pull capabilities that will make labor easy. The farms today utilize water buffalo to do all the dirty work. A giant slot could grow the same size as the bear. The favorite foods are avocados. Could eat over 200 avocados in a day. As predicted, slots are vegetarians. The long tongue would reach all the critical areas on the trees as a giraffe would. Scientists theory giant slots become extinct because they only look intimidating due to their size. Sharp claws were used as a defense mechanism. The enemies had strong bites with venom that would cause the extinction. Due to hard survival, an aggressive like Komodo dragon, alligators and many reptilians evolved through the year. The Komodo dragon had venom that has unknown to cure. Every year in America alone, 4% have been confronted with a deadly alligator attack. Just imagine back in the days, those uh, slots, they were bigger back then. The bones, the skeleton that they have. <laughs> I'm like fascinated. I really enjoy that part of the Western science, you know. You're probably wondering why I'm talking about lizard. Who could forget the Tyrannosaurus Rex? Let me demonstrate what would happen if T-Rex and Triceratop meets. The T-Rex is the king of the jungle. They may have a small arm. Do not let it trick you. A single arm could lift 430 pounds. One of my favorite part of my Western Science Center is the Tyrannosaurus. They really detailed the head of the dinosaur. Remember, according to the movie, King Kong's worst enemy was the T-Rex. Today, one of the sharpest vision is the eagle. It has 3.6 better eyesight than a human. The T-Rex can scan 17 times better than an eagle. If you ever see one, run or hide. In China, they have recently discovered they grow feathers in the head, neck, and tails to keep them warm in the cold weather. If you ever come here, try the Shasta Twist. And it's my first time drinking. Normally I drink the Pepsi, but you know, this time I drink the Shasta Twist, but it's pretty good. I'm trying to promote this place because not too many people know about this and that's in, I encourage people to come to learn uh, history about the, about the fossils so we could learn more about it.